What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we'll be diving into the one to many relationship in Laravel. Quick pause. Do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. When working with a relational database model, tables are related to each other. Eloquent provides a very powerful tool which makes the process of relating database tables super easy. The first relationship we will cover in this series is the one-to-many relationship. And whenever I'm trying to explain relationships to students, I try to explain them in a human language form. And the easiest way to do that is by reading your relationship out loud. Since the first relationship we're going to define is the one-to-many relationship, I'm going to use the user class and the post class. Now let's say it out loud. Our application will have users, but we also got many posts. But can a user make many posts? Definitely. Can multiple users make many posts? Well, technically yes, but they can't make one together in our application. So in our case, we have one user that can create many posts, and one post is related to one user. Before we start using it, we got to make sure that we define our authentication first, which can easily be done with Laravel Breeze. I'm not going to dive into Laravel Breeze because I've got a separate video of 45 minutes where I cover pretty much every aspect of Laravel Breeze. I will also link the video in the description down below. What we're going to do right now is simply installing Laravel Breeze through the CLI. So let's navigate back to iTerm. Now Laravel Breeze can be installed through Composer, but before we do that, let's run a Composer update real quick to make sure that we don't run into conflicts. Inside the root of our project, we can simply say composer require a package from Laravel forward slash breeze. We're not going to work with Laravel Vite in this course, so we're going to specify an older version that works with Webpack. So let's say colon, then we have to specify the version, which will be 1.7.0. Then let's add a double dash dev flag to it. Let's hit enter. Now this command will not pull in the authentication scaffolding itself, but it will simply add breeze inside our composer.json file. Right now, we need to make sure that we run the breeze install command to finalize it. If we perform the php artisan command, scroll up to the B, you'll see that we have a new command called breeze install. So let's run it. Let's say php artisan breeze colon install. And we're getting an error because we have deleted the welcome.blade.php file, which is needed for Blade. So let's navigate back and let's create it in the views folder real quick. We don't need to add data right here. Let's navigate back, hit the arrow up and install it one more time. Breeze scaffolding has been installed successfully and we need to run the npm install and the npm run dev command. So let's do that. With the installation of Laravel Breeze, the authentication routes have been added right inside of the web.php file. If we open it, you'll see that we have a route to forward slash will open the welcome view. We have the dashboard and it's requiring the auth.php file inside the routes folder with all those other routes. Now, as you could see, we have a small issue right here because it has overridden the old routes that we had. Luckily, we only have one which we can redefine real quick by calling the route method, colon colon, resource is the block endpoint, comma, we have the post controller, colon colon, class. If we navigate back to the browser, change our endpoint to forward slash login, you'll see a login screen of Laurel Breeze. And if we change it up to register, you'll see the register page. Now let's start off with probably the most common relationship in coding, which is the one-to-many relationship. In order to link a user to a post, we got to restructure our post migration, since we need to store the user ID inside a column. So let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code, and let's open our database folder, where we have our post migration right here. And by the way, we could obviously create a separate migration to add the user ID column, but for demonstration purposes, it's easier to add it right inside of a post migration and re-migrate our migrations. So let's add a new table right under our primary ID. So let's add a table. We're going to define a new table with a data type of unsigned big integer. Now this is needed when working with foreign key constraints, which we will be doing right now. So let's add a column name of user underscore ID. 
So let's then go right above our timestamps where we got to define our foreign key constraint because we get to make sure that the user ID that we have right here exists on the table users. So the way we can do that is by simply saying, well, our table object, get a foreign key on the table user underscore ID. Then we can change some methods right here. The first one will be references. So our user ID references to ID on the table called users. So it will look inside the tables users. It will search for the column ID and we'll chain it with our user ID on the table posts. Finally, let's chain one more method, which is called on delete. And what this will do is basically deleting the post that we have once a user is deleted. The way we want to on delete it is based on an action called cascade. Now, before we migrate it, let's actually change up our factory as well. So let's open the factories folder, post factory, because we do need to define the user ID right here as well. So let's go right under our minister read. Let's add a user ID, which will be a static value of one. Finally, we got to make sure that we refresh our table with the post factory. So let's navigate back to the terminal. Let's run PHP artisan migrate colon reset. All right, now let's run PHP artisan migrate one more time. Now we can't run our seed yet because we don't have a user with user ID number one. So let's go back to Google Chrome, refresh the page and let's define our first user, which is myself, so Dari. It has my own email and let's add my password right there. All right, if we click on register right now, you'll see that we have been redirected to the forward slash dashboard endpoint and we are logged in. Let's navigate back to iTerm one more time and let's run PHP artisan DB colon seed to migrate our factories. As you can see, it has seeded the database tables Navigate back to Google Chrome and change the endpoint to forward slash blog. And right here, you'll see that we have 200 new blog posts again. All right, so let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code for a moment and let's open our database client. Let's refresh it. Open the post table. And right here, you'll see a new column called user ID. Now keep in mind that we can't change this at the moment because we only got one user. Because remember, we defined the foreign key constraint saying that the user ID needs to exist on the user's table right here. Even though we got the user ID of a user inside our post table, we can't use it because we haven't defined our relationship yet, which needs to be done inside the models. So let's go back to our code and let's actually close off all tabs that we have, which is kind of annoying at the moment. All right, now let's scroll to the top where we need to open our models folder where we have our post model and user model. Let's start off with a user model where we need to define a relationship with a post model. Now, right at the bottom, we got to define a new method. So let's scroll down right under our protected cast and let's define a new public function with a name that's equal to the relationship. In our case, we're going to call it posts. The reason why it's plural and not singular is because a user can have many posts and not one single post. Then inside a method, we're going to define a return statement. We're going to access a global method inside our models, which can be done by adding the keyword this. And remember what I said 20 seconds ago, the reason why our relationship name is plural is because a user has many posts. There you go. That's the name of the relationship we got to define right here, has many. Now the has many relationship accepts one parameter, which is the class you want to relate it to. In our case, it will be post, colon, colon, class. We defined our first relationship. Now let's make sure that we output all posts of one single user. And the best place where we can do that, in my opinion, is the forward slash dashboard endpoint, which shows the dashboard of one single user. So this can be done right inside of the dashboard.blade.php file, which we have right inside of our views folder right here. Keep in mind that we don't need to pass in an eloquent query to the view because we got a relationship defined, which should give us access to all posts of a user. So let's go right below our div right here. Let's define a new div. Inside our div, we're going to define an h1 with the text of posts of 
colon, curly braces. We're going to access the global art facade, colon, colon, user, and we're going to get the name of it. Now let's give our H1 a class of text XL. The font is bold, the padding top is eight, and the padding bottom is two. Then right below our H1, we're going to add a for each loop, but right here, we're going to access the relationship we defined named posts. We're going to access the art facade again. We're going to grab everything of one single user, and we're going to chain the method that we defined inside our user model, which is called posts. We're going to loop over them as one single post, and then inside our for each loop, we're going to define an H2, where we're going to grab one single post, and we are going to print out the title. If we save it and navigate to the browser, refresh the page, you'll see that we have the post of my user, Sodari, which is logged in, with all posts where the user ID is equal to one. All right, now what about the other way around? Well, we first need to open the post model, so let's do that, since we need to define a relationship right here as well. Now let me actually remove all the comments that we have, and right below our protected fillable property, Let's define a new public function. Now our method name will be singular, so user. Then we're pretty much going to do the same. We're going to start off with a return statement. We're going to return this. And like I said, it belongs to one user. So our relationship name is belongs to. Inside the belongs to method, we got to define the associated class, which is user colon colon class. If we save it, navigate back to Google Chrome, change our endpoint to forward slash blog, you'll see that we have this section right here, which is made by the username and on a specific date. Now at the moment, the name is static, but since we're accessing one single post right here, we should have access to one single username. Now this works in the same exact way as I showed you before. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code, Scroll down and open the index.blade.php file inside the block folder. Now let's scroll down to our static name right here. Now we have to replace our static name Dari right here with curly braces. Then we're going to say, well, we already have access to one single post. We have to find the user method, which has a belongs to relationship inside of it. And we're going to access the name of a user. If we save it, navigate to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that all names have changed to Dari Nazar. I'm currently seeing that the dates are static, so let's quickly change that up right here. What we're going to do is saying, well, curly braces, get me the post, get me the updated underscore at, now let's add a format method to it. Now the format that I want is in single quotes, the days, forward slash months, forward slash whole years. If we save it and navigate back, refresh it, you'll see that the date has been updated as well. Now this was it for this video where we dived into the one-to-many relationship in Laravel. In the next video, we will dive into the one-to-one -one relationship. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.